Hi there, my name is Isaac Oster. I'm a senior technical artist and I've been working with the Unreal Python API for a few years. Wanted to create a couple of short videos to outline the process for exporting and importing assets into and out of Unreal. We're gonna be using Unreal 5.1. This is the factory environment collection which is available for free in the Epic Store. And I've got some code here that I've already begun to write just to kind of get through the, the basics as quickly as possible. Importing the Unreal module, creating a function. This code right here will give me all the selected assets in the content browser. The editor utility library has a lot of useful methods available. I recommend checking it out if you're not familiar. And then we're gonna iterate over the array of selected assets. So the first thing I need to do is create an asset export task. And then I'm gonna to need to create a class specific exporter. So we'll start with the asset export task. We go over to the documentation. There's some properties we need to basically just create a few of these. Uh, they are not all required, but uh, some of them are definitely required, especially if we want this to be uh, fully automated and uh, you know without any prompts that uh, will slow the process down and require user input. So once we've got that set up, one of the things that it's gonna be looking for here is our exporter. The exporter, this is sort of the top level version, is where we're actually going to run our asset export task. So we need to tell the asset export task what its exporter is gonna be, and we need to tell the exporter what its asset task is going to be. So we need to, we need to go ahead and connect these two. So the exporter here is very high level. What we actually need is a specific kind of exporter, which is going to be related to the kind of asset that we're going to be exporting, which is static mesh, and the kind of file format in this case that we're gonna be generating, which is FBX. So what I'm gonna do is create a new window here and we'll just type in static mesh exporter and FBX. So if you want to do something else, you'll just need to update these so that it's the kind of asset you're dealing with, maybe skeletal mesh or texture or whatever, and then you know whatever your file format is that you want to generate. So we're going to go to static mesh exporter. And this just inherits from exporter FBX, which inherits ultimately from exporter. So let's go back over to our asset export task here. We'll go ahead and create that. So the first thing we need to figure out is what the value for automated will be. What's the exporter? We'll, we'll do this in a moment. The file name here, that's gonna be, where do we wanna ultimately store this? And to do this, I typically like to get the name of the asset that I'm gonna be generating. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this path. See if I can expand this out a little bit. And then we'll just add in the asset name. So depending on how fancy you want to get, you could actually go through and get the import file path, which, which you could pop the suffix off of. But in this case, I know I'm going to be dealing with an FBX, so I'm just going to go ahead and pipe that in. So that'll give us our file name, the object that we're gonna be dealing with. Options, this one's really important. If you don't have options as one of your arguments, then it's gonna go ahead and, and prompt for the options. So we definitely wanna not deal with that. And so what we're gonna be looking for there is an FBX export options object. So if you've got any special settings that you wanna modify, this is where you would do it. I don't actually need to change any of these settings. So we'll just feed in an FBX export option object into export task. 
prompt, we'll go ahead and set that to zero or false. I'm not entirely sure what the difference between this and this is. Certainly you could go through and modify those, see what happened if you wanted. All right, so then the other thing that we need to look at here is selected. If I wanted to not really worry about what the thing is, just export it, then I could do selected, but I kind of want to do a little bit of an evaluation on this. So I'm going to leave that alone. The default value I think is false. And then you can, let's see, I think they might be one to potentially overwrite, but that might be on the import side. Okay, cool, great. All right, and these are all editor properties, but they have corresponding properties, so you don't have to do the whole set editor property thing. All right, so that's gonna give us most of what we need, but we need this exporter here. So the exporter that I wanna use is my static mesh exporter FBX. So we need to go ahead and set the export task. This will be equal to the FBX exporter. So we've associated the FBX exporter object with the export task, and now we can use this method on the exporter, run asset export task. and we can feed it the export task. Head over to Unreal. Run the function. Probably should have had this up beforehand. Go ahead and delete that, call it again. Cool. All right, so that is all working as it should. There's one more thing that we can do over here. Uh, pretty much everything except this line here. Let me actually scoot you down a bit. So all this stuff is agnostic in terms of the class. Maybe not so much this, but again, you would probably want to make sure that you were, whatever you were dealing with, you would you would uh, procedurally determine what the, what the suffix needed to be. So uh, one, one thing that you can do to make this a little bit more of a general process is you can do a little bit of like a, you know, if is instance. All right, and then you can come over here and, and if it's if it's an instance of a texture or anything else, then you can go ahead and have a different set of of exporters, but it's really the only difference is, is what kind of options you may be using and, and what kind of exporter you're using. So depending on what the class was, you could set that stuff up so that you can basically have a variety of things in your selection and then the, the code can handle it. So that is the simple code required to export an asset based on the user selection. Not that difficult to, like if you have a, a an, an actor selected to figure out what the appropriate static mesh is based on the uh, the static mesh actor component, and then you could you could just basically essentially feed that uh, that asset through this process. So uh, hopefully that is useful and will save you some time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And in the next video, we'll take a look at how to import assets.